I wanted to address a few things about switching from a gas heater with electric air conditioning to all electric heating and cooling with the Mitsubishi ducted heat pumps. Many players in California are all in when it comes to green energy movement and have set a goal for themselves to be carbon neutral by a specific date. In some cases, like Smud Utility Company, it's 2030, and others, like the state of California, it's 2040. So things are already in the works to make this happen smoothly. One of the routes is for home HVAC systems to be switched from gas fuel to electric fueled systems. To help the process, big time rebates are available to those who make the switch over to all electric. And those rebates won't be around forever, so people are taking advantage of them now. As homes start being built from here on, neighborhoods that don't already have natural gas pipes running to those locations will be required to use electricity only. That building code has already gone into effect starting with the 2019 California Building Code update. If you live in a home that currently uses natural gas or liquid propane, you're not required to make the switch. When your HVAC system is ready to be changed out, you can go right back with a gas electric system. So I just wanted to make that clear. Now, when we give folks the option of switching to the ducted mini splits, we usually hear something like, I heard heat pumps won't heat as well as my gas furnace. And my answer to that revolves around the fact that if you ask for your house to be 70 degrees, it's gonna be 70 degrees in your house. If you want it to be 72 degrees, it'll get to 72, just like a gas furnace. The air temperature coming out of a Mitsubishi ducted air handler is about 100 degrees, and the heat coming out of a gas furnace is around 130 degrees, sometimes higher. So yes, the heat coming out of a variable speed Mitsubishi ducted heat pump is typically less than the heat coming out of a gas furnace. But think of it like this. Unless you're trying to schedule big temperature swings in your house, like letting it get down to 65 degrees at night, and then wanting it to be 74 degrees first thing in the morning on a 28 degree night, it's a non-issue. If it's a race to see how fast the home will go from 68 degrees to 74, then yes, the gas furnace will take less time to get there every time. But here's a typical schedule that we see on modern thermostats in homes that allow the homeowner to request it to be a specific temperature when you wake up, when you go to work, come home from work, and go to bed. When they wake up, 68 degrees. When they leave for work, they'll let it drop down to 65 degrees in the house because nobody's home, which it usually won't drop down to that anyways in the daytime. When they return home from work, 68 degrees and when they go to sleep they'll let it drop down to 65 degrees because you're under the covers anyways. Those are typical settings and again the temperature is going to stay on whatever temperature you set it at. So there's never cool air coming into the house. It's going to be warm and cozy in your house just the way you like it. Another point to make with single stage gas furnaces is the temperature swings that you'll see. They'll go up and down a couple degrees more or less. In contrast, the variable speed Mitsubishi ducted air handler is going to provide a more consistent temperature in your home. It can do that because its variable speed systems ramp up and down like a speedometer on your car, providing a steady temperature all day long. Here's a question that we get from newly christened heat pump owners. Why is there water accumulating around my outdoor unit? In the summer, you have an outdoor unit, which is the hot coil. Inside, you have a cold coil at the air handler where the blower sends air across to get your cold air. That cold coil develops condensation on it, which drains into a PVC pipe and then terminates over on the side of the house. In the heating mode, everything just reverses. So you end up with the cold coil outside and the hot coil on the inside where the blower sends air across to get your warm air. That cold coil outside will condense water, which on the coldest days will create frost. Once the outdoor unit has frosted to a certain point, it'll defrost. And that melted frost becomes clean water, which will drain down to the ground surrounding the outdoor unit. It's not a lot, but it's enough to make a new heat pump owner think that something's wrong. But it's totally normal for any heat pump to go through this process. Let's talk about heat strips for a minute. Standard unitary ducted heat pumps like Train, Goodman, Rood, Lennox, Carrier, and others use heat strips to supplement the heat given on the coldest days of the year, typically under 38 degrees outdoors. Those heat strips can double the cost of running your heat pump. I'm not going to lie. 
What's different about Mitsubishi systems is that they're super efficient even under 30 degrees. Mitsubishi's units can extract more heat from the outdoor air and bring it inside to you without using its heat strips. And here's another thing. We don't even usually install the heat strips for our Sacramento area customers where 30 degrees is about as cold as it gets for a couple weeks during the nights. Our previous customers have continued staying warm without them because the system is that efficient. If we lived in a colder climate like Auburn or Placerville, it would be smart to add those heat strips since the temperatures do dip a little bit lower than 30 degrees at those elevations. In that case, running the system in the wintertime below 35 to 40 degrees outdoor temperatures will signal the heat strips to come on. And that's when the cost to run a heater will rise because they draw a large amount of electricity to supplement that variable speed heating system. So just consider this information when deciding if you want to go with these ducted air handlers. I do want to make a clarification for you on other air handlers besides the ducted system. And I'm talking about the wall mounts, ceiling mounts, and floor mounts. These never have any heating issues in lower temperatures, at least here in the Sacramento Valley. Other parts of the country where it gets below 15 degrees will want to upgrade to the Mitsubishi Hyperheat outdoor units because they guarantee heat down to negative 5 degrees. For one reason or another, the organization that rates the SEER on air conditioners and heat pumps rates the 3 and 4 ton ducted heat pumps a little bit lower than the smaller tonnage units. Ducted heat pump efficiency numbers tend to go down at higher than 2.5 tons. But I always tell people not to get so caught up in the SEER ratings on systems and focus on the system's technology. Any variable speed system will utilize less power because it can operate at specific levels, usually lower levels. Standard systems have either one or two stages or levels that it runs at, not hundreds of variable speeds like the more efficient Mitsubishi units have. Also, if you have to get caught up in numbers, you'd want to look at the HSPF ratings more than the SEER rating when it comes to the heating season. Standard unitary systems have HSPFs of around 9 or 10, where the Mitsubishi variable speed ducted heat pumps have HSPF numbers around 11 at the lowest and 13 and a half on the high end, a big difference from 9 HSPF. So these were questions that we get from new Mitsubishi ducted mini split owners. They're not used to variable speed heat pumps, so when they see a little bit of water develop on the ground at the outdoor unit, they tend to call us and ask what's causing it. If this is your first time watching our channel, please click subscribe down here on the bottom right, and if you click that little bell next to it, you'll be notified of all of our videos as they come out. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next video. You're watching Fox Family Heating and Air. Don't forget to subscribe, and check out more of our videos by clicking on the right side of the screen.